if you were going to do it. How would you? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Anya Taylor Joy moments. You do one thing, you can predict the next thing. It's not the way it's gonna be in this situation. I lay it down as a general rule. So good I am. For this list, we'll be looking at this actress's most memorable moments across film, television, and pop culture. In case you're not up to date on Taylor Joy's filmography, a spoiler alert is in order. What's your favorite Anya Taylor Joy moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. How She Got Her Big Break The Late Late Show with James Corden. I'm first going to preface this by saying that my actions were very stupid and I don't suggest that anybody does what I did. Every celebrity has a story about how they were discovered, but Taylor Joy sounds like something right out of cinema. Before she was an actress, Taylor Joy started off as a model. She headed down this career path at the age of 16 while walking her dog. The innocent stroll took a heart-racing turn when Taylor Joy realized that a vehicle was following her. So I take my dog for a walk and I see this car and it seems to be following me. And I'm like, okay, I've watched too much 24 or like whatever, it's definitely not following me. It is following me. Taylor Joy's first instinct was to pick up her dog and run. But she came to a halt when the person inside the vehicle made an enticing offer. And then this guy sticks his head out the window and goes, if you stop, you won't regret it. And I stopped. <laughs> It was the head of a modeling agency, leading to Taylor Joy's big break. It was the head of a modeling agency, and she told me off for stopping, and then told me to come into the modeling agency the next day with my parents. I'm so glad you said modeling agency and not come into the van. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Taylor Joy didn't regret stopping, although she acknowledged in an interview with James Corden that, under any other circumstances, running would have been the smartest move. Number 9. Brea Summons Lore the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. It's a puzzle. Oh, I love puzzles. Oh, I have to put the clans in their natural order from highest to lowest, and then Thrall will be in balance. This epic prequel series to Jim Henson's cult classic assembled an all-star voice cast, including Taron Egerton and Natalie Emmanuel. Taylor Joy in particular shines as Brea, a Gelfling princess who suspects the Skeksis are up to no good. Every problem has a solution. Curiosity is a sign of intelligence, and Brea proves her wits upon solving a riddle in a secret chamber. At least, that's what we always say. But why do we say that? Although Brea has been brought up to believe in hierarchy, she realizes that all seven Gelfling clans are equal. It isn't a puzzle. It's a lie. By putting this puzzle together, Brea summons Lore, a stone giant with a gentle touch. Taylor Joy's voiceover performance strikes just the right balance of brave, inquisitive, and hungry for adventure. Hello, Lore. My name is Brea. Lore will guide you to the answers you seek. The Brea puppet even possesses some of her facial features, which only makes the character feel more real. Number 8. How Harry Potter Helped Her Learn English Late Night with Seth Meyers My uncle taught me to read and to speak at the same time with the Harry Potter books. Harry Potter has become much more than a fantasy franchise. For many fans, it's changed their lives in ways that nobody would have imagined. Taylor Joy has one of the most inspirational Harry Potter stories. Although she was born in Miami, Florida, Taylor Joy spent her early years in Buenos Aires, where Spanish developed into her first language. She lived there until age six and moved to London with her family upon turning eight. The move was deeply upsetting for Taylor Joy, who went two years without speaking English under protest. Despite her initial objections, Taylor Joy adapted to life in the UK and picked up English from an unlikely source. It means that I was either casting spells continuously or using very annoying words. Like I was such a precocious, annoying little kid. It's like, mommy, I clean the dishes meticulously, you know, that kind <laughs> of thing. With some help from her uncle, she learned to speak and read English through the Harry Potter books. I checked this out weeks ago, forbidden light reading. This is light. Number 7. The Last Dance, Barry This drama explores Barack Obama's college years, allowing us to see a different side of the future president. Taylor Joy plays Charlotte, 
who, despite not actually existing, is a composite character of Obama's girlfriends during this period. Their romance leads to some interesting conversations about race, privilege, and identity. Come on, the, the president's an actor. So how does change happen then? Or uh, do you not believe in change either? Yet Barack, or Barry as he once went by, can't bring himself to confide in Charlotte about certain things. You don't see it. So show me. I can't. You're not used to being visible. Visible. The relationship builds to its natural conclusion at Charlotte's sister's wedding, where the couple shares a final dance. Uh, do I look nervous too? No. You look like you're going into battle. Although barely any words are spoken, it occurs to Charlotte that this is the end. Taylor Joy's facial expressions alone get a lot of emotions across in a short amount of time, leaving the character on a bittersweet note. Number six, the technique, thoroughbreds. Look, that's better. Yes, I know it. I'm being foolish. Actually, that might not even be fake. It is. No, look, those are real tears. She's just using the technique. The what? This underrated dark comedy is largely carried by the performances from Taylor Joy and Olivia Cook. The two play former besties who rekindle their friendship, leading to some disturbingly humorous hijinks. Cook's Amanda claims that she feels nothing, but she can replicate emotions. This makes her a wonderful foil for Taylor Joy's Lily, who is overflowing with bottled up animosity towards her stepfather. At one point, Amanda tells Lily about the crying technique, which she can turn on and off like a faucet. The technique. Holy shit. Lily is fascinated, prompting Amanda to give her a lesson in manipulation. From here, it's a slippery slope as Lily's dark side slowly begins to eclipse Amanda's. At the center of everything are two young actresses at the top of their game. Lily can give you a ride home now. Two teens in one car at night. That's an accident waiting to happen. Number five, kissing James McAvoy, Conan. While The New Mutants wasn't especially well-received by critics or X-Men fans, Taylor Joy was an inspired choice to play Ileana Rasputin. It's actually too bad that we'll probably never see Taylor Joy's magic cross paths with James McAvoy's Charles Xavier. The two did share the screen, however, in the Unbreakable trilogy. Have you seen him? The beast? No, can I kiss you? To promote the final installment, Glass, the cast sat down to an interview with Conan O'Brien. Although McAvoy wasn't present, Taylor Joy had a funny anecdote about their on-screen kiss in Split, in which McAvoy played a character with multiple personalities. I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I had such a hard time with this scene, because I mean, James. While he acted professionally, McAvoy didn't have the easiest time given the scene's uncomfortable nature. I think he had a much harder time because he was playing a nine-year-old boy kissing me whilst my eyes were wide open and I was very clearly uncomfortable. Taylor Joy, on the other hand, didn't seem to mind. We mean, it's not every day you get to have a kissing scene with James McAvoy. Sweet. Number four, Casey Cook in the car, Split. <laughs> How did you do that? Quite why I'm showing you. Oh, genius. Before giving Hedwig his first kiss, Casey Cook was confronted by the domineering Dennis. Casey, played by Taylor Joy, takes shotgun on a ride home from a birthday party. Instead of her classmate's father, though, a complete stranger gets behind the wheel. Dennis knocks out the two girls in the back, although it takes a minute for him to realize that Wallflower Casey is even present. Pardon me, sir, I think you have the wrong car. Too terror-stricken to dart out the door, Casey tearfully locks eyes with Dennis before accepting her fate. Rewatching the film with the knowledge that Casey has been tormented by her uncle since childhood, her reaction in this scene is given a deeper context. 
Throughout Split, however, we see Casey evolve from a victim to a heroine ready to fight back. Number 3. The Red Proposal – Emma But if I loved you less, then I might be able to talk about it more. Jane Austen's Emma is a familiar story, but with an actress like Taylor Joy in the title role, it couldn't feel fresher. While this adaptation is mostly faithful to its source material, director Autumn DeWilde made an addition that resulted in arguably the film's biggest laugh. In an increasingly complicated web of matchmaking and miscommunication, Mr. Knightley declares his love for Emma. Will you marry me? <sighs> Although Emma is at first delighted by his proposal of marriage, it suddenly dawns on her that this might crush Harriet. All of the mixed emotions Emma is experiencing are hilariously summed up with a drop of blood running down her nose. Emma. Oh. Emma. No. Emma. Oh. It's an unexpected yet relatable moment made all the more priceless by Taylor Joy's reaction. I must go. Number 2. The Sabbath, The Witch While not her first acting gig, The Witch is widely considered Taylor Joy's breakthrough role. For much of this surreal horror film, we're not entirely sure what to make of Taylor Joyce Thomason. Is she a wide-eyed innocent, or is something more menacing slowly being awakened inside her? Taylor Joyce's performance is so layered that we're left guessing until the haunting final act. Answer me. With nobody left, Thomason gives into temptation and accepts Black Phillip's invitation to live deliciously. What's the like the taste of butter? A pretty dress. What's the like to live deliciously? Yes. Following the goat into the woods, Thomason is accepted into the coven and ascends above with her fellow brides of Satan. The bone-chilling ending leaves us to wonder if Thomason is a tragic figure who was seduced by the devil or an empowering figure who's finally where she belongs. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Queen of the Castle – The Queen's Gambit The world will see it as a solid achievement. A draw, however, is not a win. And the one thing we know about Elizabeth Harmon is that she loves to win. The Queen's Gambit has been a runaway success for Netflix, and Taylor Joy's performance is one of the main reasons why. Chess isn't always competitive. No, but you play to win. Yes, but chess can also be... What? Beautiful. As Beth Harmon, we watch Taylor Joy grow from a reserved chess prodigy to a confident force of nature. Every step of the way, though, Beth is confronted by addiction and isolation. Beth perseveres in a triumphant finale, however. Chess isn't the most inherently thrilling game, but it makes for edge-of-your-seat drama in this miniseries. Nowhere is this more apparent than in Beth's climactic match against world champion Vasily Borgov. Our hearts race along with the ticking clock, but with one final move, the game is Beth's. It's a genuinely uplifting moment that sees an orphan who came from nothing rise up as the White Queen. Sigraim. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.